Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Lily, and I am so happy that you are here with me today. In today's video, we are going to create little house pockets, and these are going to be a little bit different. These are little bird houses, you guys, and they are made from a number 10 envelope. If you've been following along for a while, you know that I created these little house envelope pockets uh, last year, and I have made several in different styles. I started with whimsical houses, and then I also created fall, Halloween, Christmas, and happy birthday houses. And now we're working on little bird houses because why not, right? And let me tell you that the list, there are still so many more ideas that I need to go through. It's like my list is never ending. And every time I work on a certain project, I add more to that list. Just so many great ideas. But today we're gonna focus on little bird houses. If you would like to see all the others, I will have that information linked down below. But I also invite you to go over to my YouTube homepage and you can click on playlist. And I do have a playlist that will show you all of the videos related to little house envelope pockets. And like I mentioned, these are made from a regular number 10 envelope. One of these, just regular envelope or a junk mail envelope, if that is what you have. I have worked with both types of envelopes. Let me show you really quick what these look like. And I'm gonna go through everything and I'm going to show you how it is that I created these. And I've got two different styles to show you. And I will point that out in just a second. So look at that. I've added washi tape here, lined the inside, and then collaged the front with this beautiful wood grain scrapbooking paper. And I'll show you the paper pads that I used for this. I also used bird stickers. I went through my stash of stickers and I pulled out all of the bird stickers that I could find. And then cute little bunny ones too, why not? I used Tim Holtz sentiments, some little labels, and then this chevron paper as well that I honestly thought I would never use. It is not a design that I would go for, but for this particular project, I needed this chevron paper and it just, it works perfectly for this little birdhouse. Now the back is not embellished too much. I did fold over this front paper and then I did fold over the top paper and that is about it. These envelopes I have used for my junk journals, but they are also a great carrier for gifts. So if you want to do one of these in lieu of a greeting card, you can always use this as a carrier for maybe a gift card, maybe some cash or any other surprises or treasures that you wanna put in there and they can, you can use the back to write your sentiment. So lots of great ideas and so many uses for these little house pockets. Okay, let me show you the ones that I have created off camera. If you've been following me along for a while, you know that I like to show you what what we are going what we are going to work on. And so I like to make several off camera and then give you a glimpse of what the final project is going to look like. So they're all lined on the inside. They have different die cuts and different birds and then different sentiments, of course. Some of them will have gems. Others will just have stickers like this one. Look at how stinking cute these are. I will set these down right here and go through these really quick. This one, I wanna talk about that one in just a moment. But look at all of these beautiful papers, you guys. And they coordinate so well. They came from the same paper pad. And notice how I kind of, I'm going to show you how I do this because I was able to use one strip, use the larger piece here, and then the off cut, I was able to use it here and mix and match all of the different papers and they all coordinate so well. Okay, so that one, and I love the little heart cut out for the bird hole or the wood hole or the house hole. I don't know what it is. <laughs> and set one, this one, I used a scallop circle. And then this one, I used a plain two inch circle and they all look great. So you've got circle, 
scallop circle, and then a heart. Oh my gosh, so stinking cute. I've got more than one type of heart. Or maybe I haven't created that yet. Maybe I saved it to show you here. Okay, let's set these aside for just a moment and I'm gonna talk about this one. So the reason I'm bringing this one up is what if you wanna create something like this but you don't have this wood grain paper in your stash? Okay, so I used an embossing folder that has the wood grain embossing on it. Isn't that cool? Now this one happens to be Tim Holtz and let me grab it really quick to show, to show you which is the one that I used. I've got two different ones from Tim Holtz. I have this one right here. So you could see what this one is. This is great and this is the one that I used here. And then I have this one which is this one right here. And I used it on a different one. Let's see, do I have it here? I thought I had done, I think I already ran it through the embossing folder and I'll show you what that looks like in just a second. So those, there are, there are options, you guys, or maybe you don't want the wood grain. You can use a solid piece of paper and you can draw in some lines. You can also use striped paper, that will work as well. Go through your paper stash and see what you can find to create your own little birdhouses, okay? So let's set this one aside and let's start making one. I'm gonna make one of each, just so you know. Oh, by the way, let's talk about some of the things that I'm using, especially these die cuts right here. So here is a heart punch that I used. This one is quite old. Well, this, this is a better view of it. And this one is from Stampin' Up. Any heart punch will work. You want it to be, I don't know, that one looks like it might be about an inch and a half big. I actually like the two inch size, something a little bit larger like this one. And you'll notice the difference. So here's, here's this die cut from this punch. And then here is this from a Tim Holtz Biggs die. And I will show you which one that is. And it's this one right here. I love this die so much, you guys. It is one of my favorites. I use this one all the time. And as you know, I love the heart shape. It is my go-to. It is what I like to use in all of my projects. So these are always handy. So this is the size that we are going to use. I cut two different sizes from that big die. So you've got that one there. Look at that, they're all absolutely beautiful, you guys. I also punched out some scallop circles, which is that one, and for this one, I used, I used a punch, where is it? Okay, also an older Stampin' Up! die punch. This one's two and three eighths, okay? So I have that one, and then I have this right here, and this is a two inch circle punch, and I know there's some circles in here somewhere. Here we go. Here is a circle. And now if you want to do smaller circles, this is a one inch, a one inch um, punch. So let me punch one out so you have a visual. So there's no right or wrong, you guys. So you can use something like that. It still looks great. So whatever you have, if you don't have any punches, you can fussy cut, fussy cut any shape you want. Okay, so I'm gonna set these aside, but I have them ready to go. Set those aside. I don't need these anymore because I've already done some prep work in advance. Okay, we're gonna start with our envelope as I have with all of the others. So the first thing we are going to do is grab your number 10 envelope and we are going to seal the flap. Careful not to go too far into the envelope because if you go too far in, you are going to, you're gonna get some glue on the inside 
and then we're creating a pocket. And so we don't want any of that glue to spew on the inside. The next thing we do is we are going to cut or trim a sliver from one of the ends of the envelope. Just a little sliver, okay? If you are using a junk mail envelope, just a quick note, open all of your junk mail envelope. So let's say this is your junk mail envelope. Open all of your envelope. Here's the from and here's the to, and let's say your stamp is right here. Cut, cut it on one end. And this way you can reuse the envelope. So for example, you cut it here. This is your junk mail envelope. Now you have a pocket ready to be used for future projects, okay? Especially for little houses. Okay, the next thing we're going to do is we are going to take this the side that's open and we're gonna fold it over. And I fold it over, I don't measure you guys, but based on my grid right here, it is about two and a half inches. I'm gonna grab my bone folder, well, this thing right here. If you don't have a bone folder, use one of these, or you can also use one of these. Where's my bone folder? I'll find it. This right here is from Dollar Tree, you guys. It's one of those uh, Cricut tools. It's used for the uh, for Cricut cutting. So either one works just as well. Okay. So now the next thing we're going to do is we are going to cut into the side. So we're going to cut some slits on the side. So you could see how it is taking shape. This is this is how I get this look. This is step two right here. So now we're going to slice the side. Slice it. Yes. And we're gonna go, here is the crease line. I'm gonna go about half an inch past the fold line with my cut. And I'll explain it in just a moment. I may sound repetitive, you guys, especially if you've watched a lot of my other, my other videos. Do you see how I went about half an inch past the crease line? But I wanna make sure that anyone new here to my channel knows exactly what to do with these little pockets. Okay, so now that we have cut down, the reason why we need to cut past that fold line is we're gonna give it about a half an inch opening into that pocket. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So here is, here is that little half an inch gap. Can you see that? Can you see that right there? The reason I do this is so you can clearly see the contents in the envelope. So here is a tag and you could leave it like this and then close it. Easy to put in and easy to take out, just like that. If it comes up to the edge, if this little pocket came up here, then you know you wouldn't be able to see what was in there and you gotta really kind of fuss with it to get it out. This is just, this is what works for me, you guys. And so that is what I have done. So that is what I am showing you to do here. Okay. I do have more videos linked down below. I invite you to go over to my homepage on my YouTube channel. I do have a playlist that shows all of the videos of all of the other little houses that I have created. So now what we're going to do is gently pull this forward or to this edge right here. And we're gonna line up this fold with the edges of the envelope and that's how we're gonna even it out to make sure this is even across. And it kind of stops. You can't pull it any further without tearing into it. So as soon as, see that, as soon as it gives you some pull, you stop right there, level it on both sides, and now you're going to crease it, okay? Now we don't need this flap right here, so I am just going to cut it and I'm gonna cut it right at that fold line right there. And the reason I'm going to leave this right here is because it reinforces, you know, this is really thin envelope paper. And so by leaving this here, it reinforces this pocket because you will be opening and closing that right here. So you don't want that to tear and this little strip really helps that. So now I'm gonna glue that closed or glue that down. And now we're gonna fold that over. I am going to cover this with some scrapbooking paper. But do you see now, 
what I have created. This is the base of the little birdhouse and all the other little houses, they are done exactly this way right here. Now notice how I didn't really pay too much attention to these lines right here or the, the folding lines. I could have, like I did over here, see how I did the smooth side in the back and this is left here for writing your sentiment or any notes. I could have done that over here. Um, it doesn't, it, you can do either, either way. It really doesn't matter. I actually like that it shows that it was made from an envelope because it's pretty cool, especially if you are giving this away as a gift. I think it would wow someone to know that you created this cute little pocket from a regular envelope. So it's entirely up to you. I've done it both ways and believe me, it doesn't affect the, the, the outcome in any way whatsoever. Okay, so now what we are going to do is cover this with the paper. Now I have already trimmed down. I end up with all kinds of scissors, you guys. I just do. So for the sake of the video, I have already trimmed down my papers. My envelope is four and one eighths of an inch wide. And I have trimmed this just shy of that because I don't want it to hang out over the edges. So I've trimmed it to four and one sixteenth of an inch. Your envelopes may vary slightly. So you cut your paper to the width of your envelope, okay? Let me show you the paper pad that I am using. This is a paper pad that I have had for a little bit, for a little while. It is by the Paper Studio and this brand is found at Hobby Lobby. And so I've had it for quite some time. It is a thick pad, you guys, look at all that paper. But look at how pretty, it is called Barnyard Pretty. And you've got all of these different shades of these barnyard papers. And they all have that wood grain texture on them. Let me just give you a quick flip through. And there's chevron paper too, you guys. So it worked out perfect, two in one. So I've got chevron paper and then I've got this wood grain paper here. And then there's other designs as well. But I'm sticking with the chevrons and those, oh, there's also a gingham. Oh, that's pretty. That'll be for a different project. So I've really not used this paper pad. I bought it because it was pretty and it was just tucked away in my things. But yeah, beautiful, beautiful paper pad. Okay, so now, so this was 12 by 12 and I was able to cut, I cut two strips which are four and one eighths of an inch wide. And then I had an off cut, which I set aside and that'll go into my scrap box. Okay, the first thing we are going to do is I am going to, so I'm gonna take the back side and I'm gonna tuck it in right here about half an inch, you guys. Do you see what I'm doing there? About half an inch. Let me set this aside really quick. I need more room. Okay. So about half an inch because I am going to fold it over. And so there's gonna be a little bit right here. How do I know I'm getting even? I'm gonna line it up with the length of that flap right there. So I'm not gonna do this. If I just stick it in there, you'll see how it's crooked. So I'm lining it up to that edge to make certain that it is going to go in even because I'm gonna fold it over and I want my lines to be as straight as possible. Again, put it in about half an inch. You might have to play with it for a little bit, what for a little bit, but you'll get the hang of it. Okay. So once I get it even, okay, I'm going to fold it over. So I'm pressing down with my right index finger so it doesn't move. And I'm going to fold it over and I'm just going to hold it right here again with my left index finger. And now I'm going to line it up over here on this end to make sure it is even the length of the envelope, okay? And once, once it is even, then I crease it across and then it's even the length of the envelope, all right? So tuck it in and fold over, just like that. 
and I'll do it a second time so you can catch it. So now I'm gonna add glue here. Whoa! So use, I'm using glue stick because it gives me some wiggle room to be able to move the scrapbooking paper around in case I don't lay it down evenly. I'm not too worried about getting glue over here to the edge because I'm gonna fold it over, you guys, about half an inch, okay? So again, it's already folded, so when I pull, it's, that fold is gonna catch. But I'm still gonna make sure that it is even on both ends of the envelope, and now I'm gonna smooth it out. This works really well because sometimes we'll get gobs of glue. <laughs> just, that just what, that's just what happens with the glue stick. And so I'm just gonna even that out, just smooth it out gently. I don't wanna tear my paper. Now I'm gonna flip it over and I'm going to fold it to the back. And again, I'm gonna line it up with the edges to make sure it is even and then crease it right here. I could just leave this here on the back side if I wanted to and then call it good. But I need to use the excess to line the inside of the envelope for a different one. Okay, and I'll show you what I mean. So now I'm just gonna crease it here. And because I'm gonna cut right here, I thought I would grab some decorative scissors so it would have a decorative edge. So about half an inch, okay? I haven't used decorative scissors, you guys. Oh my gosh, I, I don't know. It's been a long time. So this is fun. I've had these for a long, long time. Look at that. Okay, so this I will reuse. So I'm gonna set that aside. And now I'm gonna grab this little off cut from the envelope. And I'm going to glue here to the edge. And I will reuse this little paper for this very thing here. Once it dries, I can use it over and over again. So now I'm gonna smooth that over and look at how cute the back looks. And because I don't do a lot of decorating in the back, that right there gives it a nice little touch, okay? So that is where we are so far. Look at that. Can you see here? Let me grab the other one one of the other ones so you could see where what step we're at. That's where we are. So cute. Okay, so now step number two is to line the inside. Now let me see if I cut. Okay, I'm gonna cut off camera a second one of these in a coordinating color. I thought I had some extra, so give me just a second. Okay, so I have cut, I've cut from a 12 by 12 sheet of paper and I trimmed it to four and one sixteenths of an inch. My envelope is four and one eighths of an inch. In order for this to fit in this pocket, I had to trim it down a little bit smaller than the width of my envelope because I want it to tuck inside just perfectly and it does that by an eighth excuse me a sixteenth of an inch you guys I know okay so now I'm gonna line the inside and I'm just gonna tuck it in maybe about one or two inches into the envelope about right there not not too far deep we don't need to line the entire length of the envelope just enough so that when you go to pull it open, you only see the scrapbooking paper, but we don't need to go down to the bottom. It'll just be a waste of, of, uh, of paper. Okay, so I'm setting it in and now I am aligning it up against the edges of the envelope, okay? That's how I know I'm gonna get it straight. So that's good right there. Okay, looks good. Now I'm gonna grab my glue stick now I have used my tape runner, but I ran out of tape in it and I don't want to re, um, 
I don't want to add the tape to it right now. So I'm just going to use my glue stick. Plus the glue stick is more forgiving. Okay. So now press it down. In the other little houses, I have folded this over for the roof line, but we're gonna do a different colored paper on that roof. Remember, we're going to use the chevron for it. Okay, so now I'm gonna cut the excess off. Just follow that line or the top edge of the flap. So we have lined the inside and now we are going to fold at the crease. Look at that. How pretty is that, you guys? Okay, let's do the roof. Now I already have, let me see, I think I do. Yep, it's over here. Okay. Oh, they were tucked away. Stuff is falling. Oh my goodness. Okay, here we go. So I've done the same. From that same paper pad, I cut, I cut a piece of paper the width of the envelope, okay? So now I am going to glue it down. Grab my little scrap. This way I can get, I can get to the edge right here. If you have a glue book, you can use a glue book or any scrap piece of paper or scratch paper. Okay. And now I'm gonna line it up. I'm gonna go over that fold right there about, oh, half an inch, three quarters of an inch or so. Get that out of the way. And again, line it up with the edges of the envelope and smooth it out. This can also be done with a bone folder, you guys. Did I already mention that? Did I mention that? Okay, so now the excess I'm gonna cut off. This goes by we're going kind of slow right now because, you know, it looks like there's a lot of steps, but once you get into the groove of things and you have all of your papers and you've done all of your prep work, it goes by really fast. So now we are going to fold again and then crease that fold. See how I folded it over? The reason I fold it over is because it leaves a cleaner edge at the bottom and at the top. That's why I do it. And it's easier for me. And look at that. It gives a little bit of design on the back of it. Okay, so now we're going to glue this one down. Believe me, once you get into your groove, you will be making so many of these at the same time. I like to mass produce. And so I don't know how many I've made you guys. I've made a lot like a lot, a lot. I have different stages of these right now. These are the ones I've finished. Okay, so there is that. And here, not too many steps, you guys. We're just basically collaging. And that is it. Make sure there's no glue here. So now this is the fun part. We get to decorate it. So I am going to use, so I've already used all of the others, the other shapes in the other little birdhouses but I haven't used these that I just die cut from the Tim Holtz die. So which one do I use? There's, there's this one. So I think I'm gonna do this one. I like the size of this one right here. So I'm just gonna glue that right there. Oh my gosh, so stinking cute, I love it. Oh, I love these so much. I love all of them. Every single little house that I have created, I absolutely love. But these birdhouses are so cute, you guys. 
I'm almost out of this tacky glue. I'm so excited. I get so excited when I go through my through my um, supplies. Oops, okay, right there. Okay, set that aside. Look at that, just like that, you can totally tell that it is already a birdhouse. Oh my gosh, so cute. Let me show you the bird stickers that I have. I know that I probably have more, but I just pulled out what I currently have, okay? And I, I wanted to use stickers because they're quick and easy and I love stickers, who am I gonna kid? And these are, oh, those are birds, those are little bunnies, but I thought those would be cute because I did use some of the bunnies on some of the, um, on some of these over here. And that's where I grabbed the little mushrooms too. So I have these and then I pulled out, there were some little birdies like this one here. So I pulled some of those and there are these that I just recently purchased at Hobby Lobby. These are super cute. And I bought a whole bunch of these because I love them so much. They are from this year, 2023, and they are in the Easter section. Look at how cute these are. I like these because they are matte, like where the, where the color is. It doesn't have a shine there, and I really, really like that. So these are really cute. They're $1.99 at Hobby Lobby, but right now they are 40% off. And then I have these that I've had for a while these stickers right here. So these are cute. Oh my gosh, look at all the bird stickers, you guys. Ooh, the lady has problems. Oh, those, those were stuck. And then some more of these. These are from, I think these are from Easter last year. I didn't see these there this year. Oh, and then others, maybe if I wanted to pull some of the florals, little butterflies, and then Look at how cute these are. Or are these from this year? These are different. These are from this year. These are from last year. Okay. And then I have these. These are also from this year. So cute. And there's florals and there's butterflies and there's little birdies right here. And they have texture, you guys. They're like fabric. It's pretty cool. Okay. And then I have these stickers right here. I just got these but I've had these from last year. And these are kind of cool. They're somewhat transparent, but they might work depending on the type of paper that we use. Okay, so let me set these aside. Actually, I'm going to, I need some. I need some right now. So let me see which ones am I going to use. I think I want to use some of these. But these are, I like that one. Let's see what that one looks like. Set that aside. Oh my gosh, this one with the bird nest. I think I'm gonna go with this one. Look at that, how cute. It'll cover most of the hole. Do we care? We don't care, because it's gonna look so cute anyway. Oh my gosh, you guys, look at that. Oh, so cute. Okay. And now, what if we take a little butterfly? Let's take a butterfly sticker, put that one there. You see that? And then, and then maybe some florals, maybe. Maybe from a different one. But right now, I wanna finish decorating it and I'm gonna add some labels. And the labels that I am, I just have random labels in this little bag. Random, all the labels I've ever had go in this little bag. And so I have been using these right here. Now, when I don't have anything to do, I sit and I cut these out. So I have already cut out a bunch of these. So let's find one in a coordinating color. Oh, that one's cute. Oh, I like that yellow one. Let's use the yellow one. But see what I do? This is, I fussy cut you guys in my downtime. Okay. So now let's glue it down. And you can embellish as much as you want. Okay, put 
place that there. And now I'm going to grab a Tim Holtz phrase or sentiment sticker. I have them here at the ready. And this is from, this one's called Small Talk. And I love these, love these. So I'm gonna use the white ones. There's also some in black. Oh, I've used these a lot. Okay, so now I'm gonna pull a sentiment from here. And, oops, that moved. Notice how I like off-centering the phrase sticker from the label. I like the way that looks and I've done it in most of them. So I really like the way that looks. So that is what I'm going to do here. So let me find one. Where are my glasses so I could see? Hold on. Oh my gosh, it's so much better. Okay, so let's find one. This one right here, be open to whatever comes next. Okay. And they do have a little bit of sticky um, on the stickers, but I want them to really, I don't want them to fall off. So I add extra adhesive. And I like the way that looks. I like the way that is like laid like that or off centered. I think that looks cute. And you guys, that's it. There it is. There is the birdhouse. Not too much to it because this over here adds to the look of it. Oh my gosh, I do need, you know what? I'm gonna add a little birdie right here. It needs a bird. It needs a bird, so let me find a bird. Okay, I'm gonna take one of these birds and I'm gonna put him up here. Oh my gosh, so cute, this one. You can add as many, as many or as little birds as you want. It's your birdhouse. Oh, so cute. <laughs> Look at that. Can you tell it's a birdhouse? Can you tell it's a birdhouse? So stinking cute. On some of them, I added the little dowel and that was done with this little punch right here. And I think this is 3 eighths of an inch. And then I just grabbed some scrap paper. Where is it? Right here. And then I just punched a little hole. Oh, where'd it go? Let's do another one. Okay. And then, can I add it here? Whoops, that's not it. Should I add it there? You really can't see it there, so I'm not gonna add it. Um, but you could add it if you want to. By the way, this is a uh, gem picker upper that I purchased at Daiso. I do have a video back from, I don't know, 2015 or 2016. I think it's one of the first videos <laughs> that I uploaded. It's like 60 seconds long. And I talk about this, you guys. That video is whack. But if you want to go back to back in the day, I've got a video about this. It's so funny. So funny. Okay. So there. Look at how cute that is, you guys. Stop. Stop. You could. You know how I add, I did washi tape on one of them? We could do that. And it just kind of cleans that up right here. Do you see how this one is still shows that it was cut a little bit deeper than this side over here? So if you want to cover that up, let's just get some washi tape. Plus it helps reinforce those edges as well. Where is it? This is, this is Dina Wakely washi tape, you guys. It is some of my most favorite, favorite washi tapes. I just love that woman. Okay, so now we're just gonna line it up to the top edge, fold it over, and then I'm just gonna go the length of it. Use it or lose it, you guys. And I am here to use it. And that's it. So cute. And it cleans up the edge here, and it cleans up the edge here, and look at that. It just gives it for a nice little finishing touch right there. Completely optional, you don't have to, but if you do, it looks cute. And that it, it that is it right there. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, but we're not done because we are going to do this one right here. Did I say I was gonna show you? I was gonna do this again? I did say that, huh? But 
if you replay the video, <laughs> you can see that step again, you guys. Let's just do that. Let's just replay the video, okay? Oh my gosh, so cute. I like the way those gems look. And I like the way that big, the black, the circle. Now, I, I just love them all. Look at them. Oh my gosh, so stinking cute, you guys. Okay. But now we're going to focus on this one, okay? So let me grab the papers that I have already embossed. And I did the same thing. I grabbed a sheet of cardstock in this teal color and I ran it through the embossing. I ran it through the Big Shot with the embossing folder and you can use either side. They're both beautiful and embossed with that wood grain. And I've cut it the width of the envelope. So I did some prep work. Here is an envelope that I have already cut and it is ready to go. I will tell you that when I, in my downtime, I will cut like two dozen of these and get them ready and set them aside. So here are some that I have ready to go, okay? So that is what I do. Oh, let me show you. I do have the other that I die cut. Can you catch that? I know the lighting is kind of weird right now. I'm recording this late at night. I like to use daylight, but this is the time I have right now. But look at how beautiful that looks. So I just grabbed, grabbed some cardstock, cut it down to size, and then ran it through the embossing machine. We're gonna work with this one right here. So set this one aside. And now with this one, I am going to glue it down to the front of the envelope. And for this, this is a little bit heavier. And so I am going to use some tear tape. This right here. So I'm gonna line it up on the edge. And then down at the bottom. Woo! Just so it really holds on those edges. Okay. And then the same thing over here. And then I'm going to use glue stick in the center. I just want to make sure that it really seals down on those edges just because it's a little bit heavier cardstock. Okay. And so I had a pick I was using. Where's my little pick? Okay, so now I'm going to use glue stick here. All right, we are going to line it up. I'm just going to hold it down at this top edge right here, and I'm going to make sure that it's even on the sides and then I'm gonna press it down. And then I'm gonna grab my little spatula thing and I'm just gonna smooth it gently because I also don't wanna, don't wanna smooth out all of that nice detail in that embossing. So I'm just gently burnishing it down. And for this one, I am not gonna fold it over only because it is kind of thick. So I'm just gonna cut it flush with the bottom edge. Careful not to cut into that bottom or else you're gonna have an opening. And if you watched my previous video, I talk about how I did that. You can fix it, but try to avoid cutting into that. Okay, so there it is. So there is step one of that paper. And now let's line the inside right here. And for the inside, I'm gonna use just some other papers that I have. These are from a different paper pad and I want to tell you, I, let me see, I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you the paper pad that these floral papers came from, you guys, because I also use these a lot for the inside of the little houses. 
I can't tell you what paper pad it is because I lost the cover or it fell off and I don't know where it is, but it's also a pretty thick paper pad. And I do know that this one came from Joann's and look at that beautiful paper. Look at these florals. So use whatever you have in your stash that will coordinate or that will work well with your little birdhouses, okay? Any paper will work because you know, you wanna know what makes it look like a birdhouse? It's not the paper. The paper helps, but this right here, this that gives the look of the little hole, that is what makes it a little birdhouse. And then you just put little bird in front of it and that is it, that is what it's going to do. Okay, so now I'm gonna use this one and I'm gonna tuck it inside Okay, here we go. And I'm gonna pull, put it in about, about two inches, line it up along the edges to make sure it is even. I'm gonna take the glue stick and glue it down. Every time I do this, I do it a little bit different, you guys. Once you start working on these, you kind of develop your own technique. You do what works for you, okay? And I am going to trim the excess off the flap because I'm going to use some of that chevron paper for the roof line. So follow that crease where that fold was, where is it, right here, and then fold it over. We don't wanna lose the crease, you guys because there's going to be multiple layers of paper. So we wanna make sure we keep that crease. It helps once we get to the finished project. Okay, so I'm just going to smooth it. And now the inside is done. We can also add more washi here if we want to. Let's do it, let's add washi. And we can do it before or after. I'll do it after I add, I add the, uh, the chevron paper. So I'm just gonna add some chevron paper here. Grab that. I'm running out of room, you guys. I have a six foot table, but only a 12 inch space to work with. I know it's not just me. I know it's not just me, it's everybody. Craft creep. I use this to make sure that we get right to that edge. I'm gonna go over about half an inch from the crease line because I'm gonna fold that over. And then again, line it up with the edge of the envelope and then press it down. Okay. And now I'm gonna cut the excess off here. Where do my scissors go? and then save that for another one. Okay, and now see where I folded it over here? Crease that, and I'm gonna glue it down. And now, if you want to, this is where we can add the washi tape. When you work with your favorite colors, everything matches. And you could see here, I've got my favorite shades of teal here, right here, and even in this washi tape. So everything matches, you guys. So make sure that you work with your favorite colors because then you will love the project even more. Oh my gosh, so, so cute. Look at that. There's the birdhouse. So what do we wanna use here? So I used a little heart here. I can do 
that heart right there. Oh my gosh, that is so cute. Let's see what it looks like with a circle. Oh yes. And then let's use a rounder, rounder, a more rounded heart. Oh, I like that one too. Or we could do the scallop. Oh my gosh, so many options, you guys. This is where it's going to get tough. But you know what? If you can't decide, just do one of each. There you go. So I am going to use, oh, I'm going to use that one because I love it. Why not? Okay. Let's do that. Oh my gosh, so, so cute. So it doesn't matter what paper you're going to use. This right here, this is everything right here in whatever shape you want. So now let's choose a little birdie. Okay, so I've got these. Oh, so cute. Let's do this little pink one. Oh my gosh, I lost his tail. Lost his tail feathers. Oh my goodness. Gotta go find his tail feathers. Put him right there. Oh. I took that sticker off with vengeance. But look, I'm gonna perform surgery. I can't see. There we go. Fix his little tail feathers. Oh, so cute. Okay, and I'm going to use this sticker. Be gentle. Okay, someone's at the door, so I have to go get it. Hold on. I will be right. I'll be right back. Okay, so adding that sticker right there. So, so cute. And I'm thinking I might do some gold splatters on these. I think these need a little bit of extra. These have a lot going on, but these need a little bit of extra something. Okay, so we'll try adding some splatters. Oh, I'm out of breath. I ran up the stairs. Okay. Let's do the same thing here. We are going to add a label. So I've got my labels ready to go. Well, kinda. Oh, that one's cute. Let's do that one. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, so cute. Okay. And now a sticker. This one reads, the journey is the destination. Okay. You can use any sentiments you want. You can make your own. You can use your own handwriting. Or you don't have to use one at all. All right. Look at how cute that is. It needs flowers or something, something. It's not finished. So let me see, can I pull some flowers from here? Yes, I'm gonna pull these flowers. Right there. And maybe a flower over here. I don't have too many flowers here. I have a lot of bunnies, lots and lots of bunnies. I do need a flower right there. If I don't find it now, I'll find it later. So let's do it later. But look at that, so cute. Okay, I'm gonna add some splatters, you guys, because it needs some splatters. And we're gonna get messy, so you know what that means. 
I'm going to bring in the towel. Right there. Oh, I, I was going to add the washi tape to this. Where's the washi? Okay, here we go. So let's do the washi tape before I forget. Line it with the top. Woo. Fold it over and then go across right there. Okay. Ta-da! So cute. Let's do some splatters. I'm gonna use this uh, Heidi, Swap, Heidi Swap Color Shine in gold. I am almost out of these, you guys, and they don't make these anymore, okay? And I talk about an alternative, and I have this tempera metallic gold paint that I can water down just a little bit to use as splatters, and you guys, it is almost identical to this. So, if you are interested in knowing more information or seeing a list of some of the items that I use, in this video, I do have an Amazon affiliate link down below, and that'll give you a list of my most favorite things and also a lot of the items that I use in my videos and on a daily basis. Ooh, I do need to let you know that if you do purchase from that link, you guys, I do earn a small commission, but that doesn't affect you in any way whatsoever. But if you do make a purchase, thank you so much in advance. All right. I told you I was going to get messy. And this does, this gives it that look. I just love the way the gold splatters look, you guys. I do. a lot right there but that's okay we're gonna let it dry we're gonna borrow from this one and put it on others okay and that's it with the gold splatters there so cute when that dries it's gonna look so pretty so pretty. I think I have one that I've already done. Oh, I do. Let me show you. I was going to show you the first one. Remember we talked about that? The prototype. I've got the prototype. I'm going to show you, you guys. It's a little bit whack, but we don't know until we start. Okay, so let me grab it. I'm going to set these here just so that they can dry. Okay, it, this is not it. This is not the whack one. This was, I had this on the side drawing because I did do some splatters and you could see I used a different color of cardstock with that same wood grain embossing folder. I just need to add a little birdie here and then the sentiment there. But look at how cute that looks, you guys. And can you see the color shine the way that dries? Isn't that beautiful? And I'm also going to add the washi tape over here. So I have a few that are out on the side over here, just in different stages of completion, some drawing, some in the beginning stages. All, I'm all over the place, you guys. Okay, but let me show you the very, very first one that I did, which is this one right here. I like it, but I don't love it, you guys. <laughs> but... I needed a starting point, you guys. And if you are unsure how to start on a project, you just need to do it. Because once you get going, the ideas will begin to flow. And if you make some mistakes or you try out a few things that you don't like, you can move past that and come up with new ideas. At first, I thought I wanted to create this roof line right here without cutting into the paper. And so, I cut these little strips of paper and then I mitered it up here, but I didn't love it, you guys. It looks cute, but I don't love it. I also used 
these shiny stickers, which I love. I don't mind. However, they kind of blend into the black background and so that bird does not pop enough. So I used the wrong sticker for this little bird hole right there. Unlike these over here where the birds pop, this one kind of just washed into the background. So that was not a good choice. And then I did add a little bird here and he is fine right there. These were too plain for me. So then I went and I added some glitter with some glitter glue right there. You know, I just, I just kept adding thinking I would improve on it, but at least I, I gave it a try. And then for this one, you could see how I used the other embossing folder. This is that wood ring. And then I went over it with some gold wax. It's okay. I like the look, but not for this. And then there's also some gold splatters. Now, and see the back right there. And then also lined the inside. It's okay. It'll go into my idea book. I like it, but I don't love it. And I need to love my projects, especially if I am going to use them in my junk journals or if I am going to give them away. So, but there you go. Not bad, but don't love it. Okay, set that one aside. Bring some of these others back. Those, these right here will dry overnight. But you guys, we are done. I think I covered all my bases. I think I covered all the steps, right? If I missed anything, please let me know down below, especially if you have any questions about anything that I have discussed or anything that I have gone over. Just leave me a comment down below. Let me know what you think about these, you guys. I love how these turned out. I think they are so stinking cute, like you have no idea. I love these so much. Let me know what you think down below, and I hope that you give these a try. They are beautiful. All, all of the other information will also be linked down below. Again, if you want to see all the other little houses, those are also in the playlist. And I will try to remember to put that information down below. You guys have been awesome. Thank you so much for joining me today. And I will see you next time.